Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. This week we're in the land of the midnight sun, that's right, Anchorage, Alaska, for the Jay Offson Memorial Show and Shine. Now there are cars up here, but there aren't all that many months of the year that you can actually get them out and have fun with them. So even though it's a little overcast today, believe me, this show and shine has taken place rain or shine. Let's get around and check out a few of these Alaskan rides. Three. Welcome to Alaska! <laughs> Is the weather always this nice up here? Yes, it is. We won't blame it on you. <laughs> I appreciate that. You bring them out in the weather. Sure. 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 Hey, Bruce, how you doing, man? Welcome to Alaska, Dennis. Great to be here. Nice state you got. Thank and you. Nice show you've got, too. Well, thank you. You know, this is a, I'm, I'm surprised. I knew there were cars here, but there's, there's actually more cars than I thought. And, and being, don't take this wrong, but being a bit of an outpost, I gotta believe this is mostly Anchorage-based cars? Most of them are from Anchorage. We've got some up uh, from the peninsula, we've got some down from Fairbanks. we got one guy that came all the way from Washington State pulling a trailer with his pickup truck. That's that's a long haul. I that's mean, a long and, haul. And those aren't the best roads either. No, it's not. <laughs> well, what are you gonna pull today? I mean, it looks like there's a lot of cars here. Well, right? we're hoping to get maybe 300. That's you know, if the sun was shining, we'd have got more, but uh, yeah. this is a good turnout for a rainy day. Well, you know, and, and I think that because you have so few months of the year uh, that you can do this, that the rain doesn't seem to have deterred many people. No, they bring them out uh, rain or shine. You know, if you want to have fun in Alaska, you got to be able to get wet. <laughs> you can't let the weather get in That's your way, right. right? That's right. This is our 29th annual. So you've been doing this for a while. Yes, we have. I mean, with uh, the number of cars here, and I, and I see a lot of people too. I mean, a lot of spectators. I mean, what kind of number you got there? Oh, we probably draw 10,000 people, maybe more. That's a big show. It I mean, is a big, a big show. Event. It is. Well, you know, like I say, it's, it's overcast. I don't think it's really going to rain. But but just in case, what do you say we get around and check a few of these out? You can show me some of your, your faves just in case it does rain before both of us have to get to work. Okay, let's go. All right, let's go, man. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Oh, Rick. A Marcos, I can't believe this. This is only the fourth one of these I've ever seen in my life and I had to come to Anchorage to see it. Isn't that something? It is something. <laughs> these are such wild cars and this is a, a 69, right? 69, that is correct, Dennis. Now they built them from when to when? Uh, they started assembly in 1961, built them until 71. They only made 500 of them during that period. They're so cool looking. I mean, you know, the front end is very, it's Jaguar, it's a little D-type. D-type, mm -hmm. and, yep. and is there any is there any reason for that? Was there any relationship? Um, well, I think Jim Marsh had something to do with the D-type Jags during his time. He also worked on on the Lotus 7s and owned a company called Speedex and sold race car parts for the Formula One type of cars in, in England. But the other wild thing about this car is that it's got actually a, a wooden chassis. Not only wood, it's plywood, right? Yes, that is the correct. The chassis is plywood. It's a mahogany marine plywood. Very cool rear end too. I mean, cants down and... Cammed off in the back for aerodynamics. Yeah, it's almost a Daytona Coupe. Yes, isn't exactly. It? Yep. Mm -hmm. And man, it is... It, this is only like waist high on me, <laughs> yes. and I'm not, I'm not a tall guy. <laughs> 40 inches from bottom to top. Same as GT40. Same as GT40. Love the interior, very British. Very. Uh, a lot of rocker switches. The, the white numeral gauges looks, you know, yep. looks like Typical a lot. Jaguar almost, a lot of Lucas, a lot of Smith gauges like the Jags use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tunnel's really high too. You can almost rest your arm and, and flick it yes, with actually, your wrist, It's right? uh, quite comfortable between that and this armrest right in through here. And this tunnel hatch houses the uh, transmission. The transmission's inside the car with you because this thing's flat underneath. The only thing under the car is just the exhaust pipes. Man, you are down there. Down there. So what, what power is this baby? Well, Dennis, right? this car is one of the three liter English Ford V6s. There wasn't very many of these made this way. This motor pumps out 175 horsepower, about 195 foot-pounds of torque, so it's a very torquey little motor. Right there, little... Very small, compact. Ford V6. Yep, Ford V6. Oh. Now, is this a, a gear drive engine? It is. There's no timing change. It's all gear driven. Well, how much does this weigh? Uh, it's 1,800 pounds. 1,800 pounds. 1800 pounds. <laughs> and that's so. for a half a tank of gas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a cool car. Let's close her up. All righty. Oh, man, Rick. What a fabulous car. Like I said, only the fourth one I've seen had to come all the way to Anchorage to see it. Thanks so much for bringing this baby You're out. very welcome, Dennis. Thanks for coming by. 69 Marcos. I love it. I do too. I've been having a blast <laughs> with it. <laughs> welcome back to My Classic Car. KB, I love this truck. This is a 54 GMC, right? That's correct, yeah. Man, what? I mean, it's a really smooth looking truck, but you haven't uh, modified it. This is stock. 
Pretty much, yeah. Kind of an advanced yeah. design for its time. That's right, exactly what they were called as the advanced design. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know that, actually. <laughs> but now this color scheme is something you obviously cooked up, though. This, the, it wouldn't have come this way, did it? No, I don't recall ever seeing a metallic brown one. No, But no. I, I chose this color because the interior's paint color is original. And I wanted something that blended well with that, and so that's where, where I this got came to this. Now, this is an Alaska truck, right? Yeah, it came from uh, up north. In, in a very dry climate, so there wasn't any rust on it. How long did it take you to bring it to this condition? 20 hours a week for 20 months. Ooh, it's a 2020 project. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, mm -hmm. I, mean, I tell you, she looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the interior, you know, you've just left it very, very stock. Yeah, I've tried to get as much originality into it as possible, and then just a few key little appointments, like the you know the walnut panels here. That looks and, nice. Uh, th then I've got some walnut things on the uh, on the oh, gearshift like the knobs, lever yeah. and the turn signal. Now the tack would it wouldn't have had a tack. No, it, it originally had a clock in there. Oh, but and, that's like an old Sun tack. Isn't and it? I've saved that for you know nigh on thirty years, uh, hoping there would be a place to put it. It's for a six cylinder, and, and, and so it fits in with the truck. Perfect. And, it was meant to be. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that these this walnut trim here was because of what you did to the bed. Exactly. I is, wanted to carry the theme kind of into the interior. Absolutely. This because mm. this is black walnut, right? Yeah, that's it, correct. It's got some shine mm. on it mm -hmm. too. Well, yeah, it's like sanded between each of eight coats um, of spar varnish, and it, to get it smooth and you know, all the pores filled, so so um, she could take this wet like weather that. down mm -hmm. here in Anchorage, right? Well, when you, and when you get back to the back, you, you there's no mistake. This ain't no Chevy. Yeah, I didn't want anybody to think it was a Chevy. It's a GMC. Yeah. <laughs> well, what got me when I, I saw it earlier and you had the hood open is yeah. you still got this, a six banger in it, right? Yeah, and I've always been fond of the, the sixes. Me too. Let's go look That's at that. That's what got me through college. And <laughs> it was They always ran into parts cars. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Now, that it wouldn't have uh, looked like that well, it, it's, coming from the it's factory. It's glammed right? up with a lot of vintage Wayne uh, racing equipment on it, but uh, this is out of a Korean War six by six military six by six, and and that engine starts out at 302, and I've bored to 320. Wow! And then I put you know split exhaust and um, old school parts on it that were available back in the 50s. Yeah, I mean it's definitely so, old school. I mean mm -hmm. even this this intake setup is yeah. and your carb setup is awesome. Yeah. Well, it, that's a it's a great looking truck. Close her up. All right. So, you know, is, is she a lot of fun to play with? Oh yeah, uh, we really enjoy it. And, and another thing about the cruises and stuff, uh, it's my wife and mine's opportunity to have date nights still. There you go, you there know? you go. And, in your, uh, in your so 54 that's, that's, GMC. Yeah, that's part of it. And I learned how to drive in <laughs> these old Chevys and Jimmys like this. Well, I'm glad so you brought her out, KB. I had a fondness for it. She's, mm -hmm. a, she's a beautiful ride, I Thank love it. Thank you. Great for date night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome back to My Classic Car. Well, Mike, I like Corvairs. I've always liked that second gen, the 65 to 69 body style. I think it's a pretty cool car. Now this <laughs> was a, it's a, really a family project. Your, yes. your, your dad and your, you and your other brothers and stuff. I have two stuff. other brothers, yes. Where'd Working you find the car? I, uh, dad originally got the car in Utah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, pretty rough, pretty, pretty clean, what? Um, it had some rust in it in the quarters and uh, the trunk is very famous for yeah. rusting out on these. And of course the floor pans and stuff. Well, you know, so it's it's lowered a little bit, you know, bit. And, and it's got some stuff going on in the front end. You're going, ah, I don't think that's a regular Corvair. So you go to the interior and you, you right. look in here and you go, yeah, you know, so far, so far, so Corvair. You yep. know, it, it's, uh, you know, it looks pretty Corvair, but a tip off might be that shifter. Yep. The shifter's out of a 67 Camaro. But it's when you look in the back seat, really, and you see, instead of a back seat, you see a very, very large engine. Yes. What is that? That is a 455 Oldsmobile out of a 69 Tornado. <laughs> that's, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> that's insane. But you know, it looks like it almost fits in there. It does. It fits in there very well. And I, when we built this car, we had intentions of family type being able to go out. So I wanted to be able to use the back seat. So we, that's why we designed it in a way that you could still have So you can actually seal it back up and, yes. and you, you do have a back seat there. Wow. Yes. Well, let's, let's go to the back and, and get another look at this baby. Open her up. Well, I don't know, where'd the engine go? Yeah, we hit it. <laughs> it's hard Kinda to hide a 455. Yes. yes, it is. Man, so 
how, how did you how did you do this? It had to come in from underneath. Yes, it comes in from underneath, and what what makes it all work is the the Tornado being as it's a front wheel drive vehicle. That's what makes it work is the transmission. I see. So that now that had a chain drive actually, right? Yes. The, the, it has a big chain that comes off of the back of it and then it basically pushes the power forward to a differential and then it still uses the Corvair geometry and everything that goes into the differential and voila. Wow, it, it must have been quite an engineering feat. Yeah, it, uh, it took some work. But you, you guys were we up got for it, it, right? Yes. <laughs> well now, with a 455 and a Corvair, I mean, is this thing fairly squirrely? No, it actually it handles pretty well. Really? Yes, it, because the engine is sitting directly over the axle, it helps uh, with the uh, drivability of it. Uh, puts the weight right over the rear yes, tires? Yes, it does. It well, does. now, I mean, it's lowered. Is that just because it's lugging around this big engine, or did you um, modify the well, suspension? Well, we had to modify the suspension a little bit, um, mostly mostly in the rear end. The, the, the front end has been lowered just a little bit. Well, I think it's awesome, and, you know, I don't know what... Nader would have said about this one, but yeah. I think it's way cool. Mike, well, thanks, thanks for bringing it out, Thank man. You, sir. Well, Kevin, I love these cars. I love these. This is a this is a Volkswagen microbus. Yeah, 21 the, window. The 20 that's what they call it, 21 window microbus. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. 1960. 65. 65. 65. Well, these things are now becoming really popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. Um, this one was sold new in Fairbanks. Oh, it's it's so it's an Alaska. It's an Alaska bus? car. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All it ever did was haul the kids to the hockey game, you know. <laughs> so a, a hockey mom, hockey mom bus owned this back in '65. Probably. Wow. That, and I, I always loved how the windshields opened out. I yeah. mean, that was your air conditioning, right? That was the only. That's all you had. <laughs> now you've restored this, eh? That's right. That's and right. did you do most of it? I did everything but the paint. Paint wow. was professionally done. I tell you, gorgeous, gorgeous vehicle. The 21 windows are great. But man, your interior—that is—that's some serious custom in there. Yeah, that's. Uh, it's what I do for a living. I'm an aircraft upholsterer up ah. here. And, uh, there's five dead cows in there. <laughs> Poor things. <laughs> well, it's great. I mean, it's it's uh, it's just really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And not only is it uh, beautifully upholstered, but you've also done a really creative job of laying out the passenger compartment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this that's isn't right. your three rows no, of bench seats. It's, there's there's uh, four seat belts in the back and. Uh, it's quite comfortable. So, I mean, you took kind of a limo approach to this. Yeah, it's just something I've had in the back of my mind for years. And uh, this it, has got uh, to be a blast to go out in. It though. is. It, I mean, it, it gets a lot of attention. <laughs> so, you carried the theme on through to the back here? That's right, Dennis. Oh, man, I absolutely love it. You know, the tan's great, the, the red accent, but the, the, the yellow piping really sets it off. Just a little bit of color. Well, what's powering this baby? It's down here, right? Yeah. Hot 21, it says. Okay, so uh, what this is this is what you'd call a it's a, a stroker motor 2110 cc stroker motor um, it's got a porsche style fan shrouding on it makes it a little different yeah uh, 44 weber carburetors on each side on each side yeah not nice. a good on a good day these had about 50 horse stock and, and, now, and this one's around 150. Well, that's that's a little so bit so it uh, yeah it, it goes pretty good man well you've also uh you know you've you've basically you made it a, a hot rod back here but you've also, I mean, you've dropped it a little bit, right? That's right. It's uh, lowered about four inches. I love the wheels. And then, uh, yep, just, uh, and then four, four disc brakes on it. She's absolutely beautiful. And there's a lot of V-dubs here. I'm surprised. But I got to tell you, Kevin, you got the coolest V-dub here. Thanks for bringing well, this baby out. Thank you. 21 window micro bus. Micro bus. I love it. <laughs> hey, we had a great time up here in Anchorage. And you know, they put on a pretty nice show and shine. Alaska's called the last frontier, and I gotta tell you, they even build some serious golf carts up here. <laughs>